Welcome to Mexico, the place where you can find all kinds of surface types, water splashes, big big jumps and tons of tight turns. To get the best alignment, you should add some toe out to the front wheels. This will help with taking turns, because the inside tire will point at the corner, dragging the car through it. For the rear wheels, you can add more toe in to help with the car's stability and for faster corner drive outs. For the camber, these values will suffice, because gravel and dirt stages don't offer that much surface grip, so the tires won't deform that much when cornering. But always have the front camber set higher than the rear camber, because steering also adds a little bit to the deformation. In the differential tab, I've gone with a more open driving lock on the front and rear diff than before, because I felt too much understeer when trying to take those tight corners. Plus, here on the Mexican tracks, you will find a lot of them. The braking lock is set just lower than the driving lock, this way when you're off throttle, the wheels can spin more freely so taking turns will be easier. Much lower lock values may mess with the car's stability under braking by inducing a yaw effect in case of wheel lockup. Last but not least is the preload, which adds some diff lock when lifting the foot off the throttle before corners. I recommend a lower value on dirt or snow tracks, but if you want more stability when cornering, you can crank up the preload value, but this comes at the cost of inducing some understeer. For damping, you can go with a slow bump just a little bit on the softer side because the road surface in Mexico is pretty good. I've gone for a minus one value, but on some tracks, a few segments may get more bumpy, so if you feel like it, you can also set it to minus two. But don't go any lower because you will sacrifice the stability. Now, for the fast bump, you can see it's set almost all the way up on the stiffer side, because if you race on the following tracks, you will encounter a very big and violent jump. The bump division can be set at a medium value because you don't want to only absorb that huge jump with a fast bump, but also more of the other smaller jumps. This way you won't hit the bump stop and the stability will be improved. Since on these tracks are a lot of bumps, crests and jumps, set the rebound at a medium value on the softer side. With this, you won't mess with the stability too much and also make sure the wheels stay more in contact with the road even if the car is pushed up by all the bumps and crests. In the braking tab, the braking force may seem like a lot, but if you're cautious enough with the pedal or if you have the ABS assist on, the car will decelerate as fast and safely as possible. The braking bias should be set more to the front wheels, because setting them more equally may result in more often lockups to the rear wheels. And the handbrake force should be set high enough so that the rear end will rotate much faster and easier before tight turns, U-turns or acute hairpins. The gearbox, the most time consuming thing to get right for any car setup. Since these tracks are filled with corners, you need to focus more on acceleration. This means short first to fourth gear and short final drive. But because most of the Mexican tracks also have a few long straights here and there, lengthening the fifth gear is necessary to achieve higher speeds. Springs. Even though the road here in Mexico is mostly surrounded by piles of dirt on both sides, setting the right height at the maximum value still won't get you over them without causing trouble. So with this said, 58mm of ground clearance will be enough to have good body roll and also allow you to cut some corners here and there. The spring rate should be set pretty soft to allow for the best bump absorption, because the surface is made out of gravel and dirt, so you want a smooth and stable ride. The anti-roll bars, combined with this ride height, should be set at a medium value to allow for enough body roll absorption without increasing the likeliness of tipping over. If you're new to the channel or if you missed the announcement post, I want to let you know that I've started a Discord server which is free for anybody to join and have a chat, you can ask for driving tips, share moments and more. The link is in the description. Also, if you're a member of my channel or if you want to become one by clicking the join button, you will have a few more benefits that await you. With this, you will also support me in my day-to-day -day life and I can invest in better gear so I can deliver more accurate training setups and better videos overall which you guys will benefit from. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track! Bye bye!